supravertebral block. This is another video uh, that cover part of my course to cover the truncal region and analgesia. Um, as you see here, all these blocks you will find a dedicated video to explain them. And I made a, a longer video to give you the fundamentals of um, truncal blocks. So let's get started. So um, back to the basic. Let's understand the anatomy here and what we are dealing with. So this is a typical um, spinal nerve, thoracic spinal nerve between T2 to T11 or T12. And as you see here, the spinal nerve start by um, the union of the ventral and dorsal root. The spinal nerve uh, by itself is not that long, it's about two centimeter. And soon it bifurcate to the ventral or anterior rami, which continues as the intercostal nerve and the dorsal or posterior rami that give you medial and lateral branches and in some references also intermediate branches branch and um, as you see here the intercostal nerve continue wrapping around uh, the chest and it give you uh, anterior branch uh, sorry lateral branch that further branch to anterior and posterior and anterior cutaneous branch here um, Another important thing here uh, to notice the sympathetic uh, ganglion and how it is connected to the uh, spinal uh, nerve, specifically the ventral rami by uh, the gray and white ramus communicans. So building on that, now let's learn about the paravertebral space. So here, I highlighted for you the paravertebral space on um, blue. Uh, here, as you see here, this is epidural space. Uh, so you can you can see how close the epidural space to the paravertebral uh, uh, space. So let's learn about the boundaries. Um, so anterior or anterior lateral here you have the parietal pleura. And it's important to keep in mind how the parietal pleura and the lung curved in this way. And this has an implication that I will uh, explain to you in a, in a minute. Then if you go uh, medial, obviously you have the posterior lateral vertebral body, the vertebral uh, uh, disc, and the vertebral foramen and spinal nerve. If you look posterior, which is not visible in this specific axial cut, I will show you in another picture, but you have the um, superior uh, 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 costo transversus ligament, very important landmark, superior costo transverse ligament. Then if you look lateral, you have the posterior intercostal membrane and the intercostal space. So some references, they include the sympathetic ganglion inside the paravertebral space. Uh, I don't think this is uh, uh, the case. Um, maybe some, there is some anatomical variation, but the paravertebral space should not really include the sympathetic ganglion. It's anterior to the paravertebral space, but you still can get a spread and sympathetic um, block. Now look, let's look at another uh, cut here. So um, important landmark again, the superior uh, costo transverse ligament that form the posterior border of the paravertebral space. The superior and inferior border, they are formed by the head and neck of the uh, uh, ribs. 
Now, so this is the paravertebral space. Again, anterior lateral, you have the parietal pleura, medial, which is not visible in this uh, picture. It was visible in the previous one. That you have the vertebra posterior, the superior costo transverse ligament, lateral, uh, the posterior intercostal membrane, and the intercostal space, which is also not visible in this cut. And the superior inferior, you have the head and neck of the ribs. Uh, another important uh, space and uh, something to keep in mind is the um, retro superior costo transverse ligament space. Long name, but basically it's the space behind the uh, superior costo transverse ligament. Uh, why this is important? Because uh, until recently, the thought was, if you really don't put your needle behind this ligament and put the medication there, then you're not going to get a, a paravertebral space. But recently, um, there is a new study that showed that actually uh, there is some communication between the paravertebral space and the retrosuperior retrosuperior costo transverse ligament space and that's when the nerves get uh, traveling through the ligament so even if you put the medication here some medication will uh, eventually go to the paravertebral space eventually you probably have a longer onset of block and then also another important thing about here so this is the the transverse process and this is the rib as you see here. So the rib uh, um, uh, touch the transverse process uh, at this level, uh, this call it the costo transverse joint. And therefore, um, this is the lateral uh, uh, costo transverse ligament. So when you are doing the landmark technique, obviously you, are, uh, you, you come with your needle um, and try to uh, touch the TP, then walk off the TB superior. And as I'm going to explain to you in the next uh, slide how we do it, but basically look at the distance. There is um, not much distance once you pass the TP to go through the superior costal transverse ligament. Now, this is another picture. Uh, very nice coloring, so I, uh, uh, I thought I will add it. And it also, this is at the T3 uh, uh, level, it show you the paravertebral space. Um, the, again, the sympathetic ganglion is outside the space, but very close, so we can get a spread there. And um, we cover the rest of the anatomy. Now, how we do it, um, Nowadays, we do it with ultrasound. However, I decided to add to this video the landmark technique for a couple of reasons. One, this is really a very old way to do the paravertebral block. It has been done for decades and it's effective. And if you don't have an ultrasound, for whatever reason, you still can do it. So specifically for landmark technique, um, sitting position is preferable. The first thing you want to do is to mark the spinous processes. Then measure two and a half centimeter lateral to that and mark it. And then, uh, of, of course, you have to decide which level you will do. And when you um, uh, connect these lines, basically, this is your uh, TP. As you see here, this is your TP. So then usually the depth from the skin to touch the TP is about three to four centimeter. It varies between people. So it is very important if you are going, um, and I will show you the needle. So we're going to use a two-he needle, use a short one. Um, um, I prefer it more, but you still can use the other one. But so do not go beyond four centimeter because you really should touch that 
transverse process at that level. If you are not touching the transverse process, so uh, withdraw all the way to the skin and angulate uh, caudate or cephalic. Now, another important thing uh, when you place your needle, do not aim to medial because you're risking spread to the epidural space. I showed you in the previous picture how close the epidural space to the paravertebral space. And do not aim very lateral because you can puncture the pleura and um, cause the pneumothorax. So uh, again, insert the needle, uh, 22 gauge uh, to a needle. Uh, I prefer the five centimeter. And then walk off the TB. Uh, you can walk off inferior or posterior, probably superior, uh, sorry, inferior or superior, probably superior is uh, safer. So as you see here, you, went, you come with the, with the needle, you touch the uh, TP, so then you angulate more superior and you walk off. And then from there, go slowly. You may or may not uh, feel some losive resistance when you pierce through the superior costal transverse ligament. However, uh, usually it's about, as I showed you in the previous slide, uh, picture and here, usually um, it's about from here to here, about one centimeter, one and a half centimeter. So do not exceed um, one centimeter. So whether you feel the pop or not, do not. Um, another way is just uh, to do it, just to forget about the, the, the feeling. And once you touch the TP, uh, angulate uh, superior and advance one centimeter. So hopefully you will uh, pass the superior costal transverse uh, uh, ligament. And then inject four to five mil of local anesthetic at each uh, level. And also you can insert a catheter. But remember, when you insert a catheter here, there will be more resistance than epidural catheter. So the ultrasound technique, you can really do it either in prone or lateral position. Um, um, generally speaking, we have uh, three approaches, two paramedian, sorry, two paramedian sagittal approaches, in plane and out plane, and one a transverse approach, which is um, uh, in uh, plane. Um, The, the risk of catheter migration into the epidural space is, is lower with this uh, approach um, than the transverse. So maybe you should use it when you are putting a catheter as a provider preference. Now let's um, review them uh, quickly. So this is the paramedian sagittal in-plane technique. As you see, the transducer, and the needle uh, direction, which is also uh, here. So what you will see in your ultrasound is this picture. So this is the, the TP uh, overlying the, 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 the head of the rib. And here is another one. So first you have the uh, trapezius muscle, a small rhomb rhomboid then a rector spinae here, the big one, and then all these muscles, as you know, is the intercostal muscles. And then um, if you uh, try to um, uh, focus here, so you should always see the pleura, don't put your needle without seeing the pleura. And if you focus here, you can probably see the superior uh, costal transverse ligament. So uh, now we are doing in-plane technique. So you're going to come from uh, uh, caudal to cephalic and uh, put your medication around here. Then the next approach is also para median sagittal, but it's out of plane technique. Um, some people also prefer this. Um, basically, here is uh, your ligament. So you come out of plane and uh, you can always um, push some saline just to see your tip. And when you get close here, close here, 
uh, you will start to see uh, pushing uh, the, the pleura uh, down. So you can do either uh, technique. The last one, which I personally prefer, the transverse in-plane technique. It's very really easy and safe, in my opinion. So um, the best way to do it, just feel the rip uh, with your fingers, put your ultrasound over the rib, so you will see with the ultrasound um, uh, just just whiteness basically, and slide down or up to the space uh, you intend, and you will see uh, this uh, ultrasound picture. So you will see the first muscle is the trapezius, a uh, small rhomboid, and a rector spinae. And then here you have uh, the, the TP and here the pleura. See how the pleura is curved. The pleura is curved. So if you are in here, of course, you have the external and internal oblique and the um, innermost uh, intercostal muscle right here. So this will be all your uh, part of vertebral space. So if you are coming from here, you can put your medication here safely while watching the pleura and uh, aiming to uh, this area here. So what nerves we are blocking here? We are blocking everything, the ventral and dorsal rami of the spinal nerve and sometimes the sympathetic ganglion based on how the medication is spread and that will give you visceral uh, pain relief. Um, it's indicated for breast surgery, thoracic surgery. If you are doing breast, so you should aim for T2 to T6. Um, rib fracture, liver, minimal invasive cardiac surgery, post-herpetic neuralgia. Post-herpetic neuralgia for chronic pain is one of the common things uh, we do in chronic pain, especially if the rash reach all the way to the spine. Uh, contraindication, like any general contraindication for black, general, uh, generally speaking, refusal, um, allergy, infection at the site, etc. Complication, um, failure, especially with the landmark technique, um, epidural speed, if you go more medial, Horner syndrome, vascular puncture, and pneumothorax, and last. So this is a meta-analysis that I have done a few years ago, but um, is still relevant. Uh, basically, uh, this was a mixed effect meta-analysis to see how we can improve the um, paravertebral block. So adding opioid uh, definitely improved the quality of the block and doing multiple level versus just single injection uh, improved the block. Um, in the past, there was some thought that, okay, I can't just do a single injection and it will spread up and down. Yes, it will spread, but how far it will spread. This is why doing a multiple level is superior to a single injection. Of course, ultrasound uh, uh, improved the safety. So this is a complication and um, all reported complication in, in hundreds of patients. Um, as you see, um, the most common compli uh, complication or side effect, if you wish, was the block failure. And when you compare the anatomical versus the landmark uh, was, uh, uh, versus the ultrasound was the same. This is probably now we have more data. Now probably the difference is, is uh, significant and ultrasound has less, um, but it increased when we do uh, multiple. Um, hypotension, epidural spread next, a Horner syndrome next, vascular puncture. But uh, generally speaking, uh, if we look at um, the ultrasound, you always have a lower risk of complication and side effect. And thank you for watching.